Hello and welcome back to the drive school. Today we are going to tune the generator to tune the permanent magnet synchronous machine. Here we have a diesel engine and a permanent magnet generator and our drive with the generator application. The tuning of the generator is basically these steps. We start by putting the drive in the commissioning mode. We put it to frequency control mode because the open loop is not tuned yet. Identification run without rotation is the first thing. We check that the motor is running nicely in open loop after that. Then we do the identification run with rotation. We do the identification of the encoder. Check that the encoder reading is right, that direction and scaling is right. Then we can turn the drive to the closed loop mode and we can then check that we are running nicely in closed loop before we go the mode back to power takeout, power take in or the boost mode. So we go to the reference handling, we select the commissioning mode. Also we make sure that the drive is set to frequency control. It's not sitting in closed loop. So frequency control. Then we do the identification at zero speed. We go to the basic parameters. We select identification ID with no run. We take a look at the current and see what's happening with the motor right now. We start it manually and it will start making some noise. And also we will see that it put a current to the motor. What is actually happening now is measuring the stator impedance. Measuring the resistance in the copper, basically. Finished. And we can see from the ready here and not the fault. We went, didn't go into the fault state. That makes this ID run successful. So this was a good one. Okay, the next one will be identification with rotation. But first, I want to check that this motor can run freely, nicely. And here comes a startup in open loop, which means that the polar angle is not identified, so it could be a little bit brutal. Let's see what's happened when I try to start it. It did a jolt, and that was basically when magnetizing the stator, and it doesn't know where the poles for the, the rotor is, it makes this movement. So be aware that starting up in open loop for the first time there will be a movement on the motor. Let's try. Yeah, there was a little rush. And that... Note that the current is about 7.5 ampere, which is quite high for this small motor. And this is open loop in a nutshell. We over magnetize the stator to be sure that it is able to hold the magnets. We make sure that it runs nicely and I want to run in that quite high RPM to see that there is no vibration, no mechanical problem because the identification run will be with quite high RPM and I want to know that it actually can do this in a controlled way. Okay, it was successful. So I go and get back to identification and I select first, no action, and then I go to identification with run. Within 20 seconds, I have to hit the start button and now it will happen a lot of things. First, it will repeat the identification run without rotation, doing the impedance check. Then it will start rotating on the shaft and that is for identifying the back EMF curve. So what we are seeing now is that it rotates the shaft and see what kind of voltage coming back from the generator or the motor in this case. Okay, it was already happy with that one. Sometimes it takes longer time, but because it's actually it's been doing the identification run before, the numbers were not too off, so it was happy with this. You have to compare the parameters before and after, then it will probably be a lot of changes in all the parameters that have to do with the back EMF curve and the UF curve. The next now is to verify the encoder signal. 
we will go to identification, we go to no action, I select encoder ID run. And it the purpose with this is to find the set pulse. I hit the start button and it start doing this strange movement and that is the state of field swiping over the rotor magnets to find the magnet and the relation to the set pulse of the encoder. Okay, it was happy with this. If I start it now, it's still in open loop and the startup is a little bit brutal. Let's try to do it just to see that it still runs okay. The startup is a little bit brutal. This is open loop. It doesn't know where the polar angle, it doesn't use the encoder right yet. Still we can see the current is quite high. So open loop is over magnetized, not so efficient running off a permanent magnet motor. Okay, let's change that. We go to the reference handling and we select from frequency control to closed loop speed control and viola. Now the current. We are starting from zero speed and notice how gentle and nice the startup was. Start, stop. There is not a movement in the motor. When we start moving it, we see that the current is very low. It's only 0 0.2 ampere. That is almost nothing compared to when we run it in open loop. And that is because in a closed loop it doesn't use more current than needed. There is no reactive big current going on before you actually need it. It runs smoothly and nicely. For the generator application, Danfoss recommend strongly that you run closed loop with an encoder. Okay, now it's running very nicely as a motor. This is more or less like PTI, power take in mode. Okay, let's try to change the mode to power take out mode. See that it is capable of producing the correct voltage. I have set it to produce 700 volts. So we go to the mode and we select PTO. Now the job for this drive is to produce DC. And my drive is supposed to change this voltage to 700 volts now. So when I hit the start button, 700 volts. Well, let's see what we can do with this application. We are now in power take out mode. It's not running right now, it's sitting there. And the 700 volt DC is produced by this active fountain, which is connected to the city grid. The diesel engine is providing the power to the system. So we have mechanical energy available on the shaft generator. We are now starting the generator application. It will contribute to the DC bus. Actually, it will now draw power from the diesel and into the DC bus and we will see that the city will receive this power. So, let's start. Here we saw that mechanically load on the diesel was increasing quite rapidly, out of the diesel. The DC bus is receiving a lot of energy from the generator application. And where does it go? It goes to the city. Here we can see the city is receiving all these amperes from the diesel engine. We now can see that we actually have a current of about 8 ampere running to the city. Could we do it opposite direction? Yes, of course, we can take power from the city and put it into the shaft. And in the next episodes, we will take a look at the different modes available in the generator application, the power taking modes, the boosting modes, and how we can change these on the fly. Thank you for watching.
Yeah, I'm gonna go for my mouth. 